spoilies for the show with the, the house with all the owls in it. If you're not caught up with Amphibia, then please don't watch this. Okay, thanks, bye. Hello, everybody, this is Kirby over yonder. And with the Owl House currently on mid-season hiatus, I want to take the time to talk about one of the most interesting characters to be introduced this season, that being Hunter, aka the Golden Guard. A lot of people compare Hunter to Luz, claiming that Hunter is sort of like a dark alternative to Luz. And while I don't necessarily think that comparison is invalid, I actually think Hunter shares more in common with Amity. Here's why. Both Amity and Hunter have parental issues. Granted, so do most of the characters in the show. But Amity and Hunter are the only characters whose parents are flat out abusive. And no, Camilla isn't abusive. Sh shut up. Amity's parents essentially use her as a puppet to advertise their own products. They also emotionally manipulate her and try to prevent her from having any friends. The Blights are rich capitalists who are held in very high esteem, which forces Amity to act as though she's basically perfect in order to not ruin her family's reputation. Hunter, on the other hand, no longer has his parents as they were killed by wild magic, or so his parental figure, Emperor Bellows, claims. The dynamic between Hunter and Bellows is very interesting, because if you look at it at face value, it may seem like Bellows actually treats Hunter very well. However, he's clearly just using Hunter as a pawn in some sort of bigger plan he has. There's clearly a lot that Bellows isn't telling Hunter in order to keep him on his side. But because of Bellows' manipulation, Hunter thinks that he's doing good by following his orders, and he won't be convinced otherwise. So both Amity and Hunter have abusive and manipulative parental figures. However, there's a major difference between Amity and Hunter's situation. And it's that Amity has people in her life who support her. She's got her siblings who, while they initially seem quite rude to Amity, do genuinely care about her and want her to be happy. But then there's Luz, someone who Amity initially saw as just an annoyance who got in her way. But once Luz showed Amity some actual kindness, she started warming up to the idea of being friends with her, and said friendship eventually blossomed into a romantic relationship. Her support group allowed her to not only stand up to her mom, but also change her hair color without her mom's permission, something that might diminish the reputation of Blight Industries. Hunter, on the other hand, doesn't really have anyone who genuinely supports him, the only person who seems to genuinely want to steer Hunter on the right path is Luz. But even that can only go so far when she's actively going against Hunter's goals. Enter the ninth episode of Season 2, Eclipse Lake. The only episode so far in which Amity and Hunter actually interact. In which Amity, Ida, and Kane travel to Eclipse Lake while Luz is sick in order to get some Titan's blood to help Luz travel home. And on their way, they run into Hunter, who is also looking for Titan's blood but for Emperor Bellows. So the group decides to tie him up and keep him with them so that he doesn't get the Titan's blood before them. Hunter manages to escape, but when he gets there, realizes that the lake is completely dry. And because he's failed, he starts digging his own grave in a scene that's honestly pretty disturbing. But remembering how much Luz showing kindness helped her out of a similar rut, Amity extends her hand out to Hunter in an attempt to befriend him. However, Hunter, after seeing a portal key with Titan's blood in it in Amity's coat, denies this, and just tries to get the key. Ultimately, through the support of people who care about her, Amity was able to develop into a person who can support other people. However, Hunter cannot yet accept that support because it's coming from people who he views as against him, and it's all thanks to Emperor Bellows' manipulation. However, it's not all doom and gloom for Hunter, because at the end of the episode, his palisman, who had been following him around for the whole episode, actually starts talking to him. Who knows, maybe this is the kind of support Hunter's needed this whole time. Personally, I'm really interested in seeing more of Hunter and Amity's storylines, and I really hope the two interact more in the second half of Season 2. But what are you looking forward to when the Owl House returns? Let me know in the comments, and Kirby, out.